mad at the present, you won't even be able to celebrate a brand new future. Whatever you tolerate will always manifest in your life. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, what are you tolerating? Tell somebody else, say, what have you been putting up with? What up with? See, whatever you tolerate, <laughs> see, you are the only one that gave permission to whatever is existing in your life right now. Amen. You're the one that gave permission to that thing. Amen. Whatever people are existing in your life right now, you gave permission for them to remain in your life. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Look like you need a change. Now we're still dealing with the power of money. See, when you begin to interrupt cycles, see, cycles, in order for cycles to be interrupted, that means you're going to have to do something radical. Something that's, something's going to have to show up to block whatever the cycle is and cause it to be rearranged. Like if water's flowing in a particular way and it's too much coming, you build a dam. Amen. So therefore, you need to do something radical in order to break a present cycle that is existing in your life. Amen. How many of you are ready for a brand new future? Amen. How many of you are ready to change your present? Most of us have trained ourselves to become, to become content with our present environment. Amen. If you can't say amen, I understand. I can understand you not hooking up with me today. I know, I know this is a tight word. See, until you become disturbed by the present, you'll never know the joy of the future. Amen. Let's move on. <laughs> Money exposes your what? Well, let's look at this in Luke 16. Since we're talking about money. Money exposes your character. He begins to let them know in verse 9, And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of mammon of what? Mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, that they may receive you into everlasting habitation. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in what? In other words, if you've been faithful in what is least, you'll be faithful in much. But notice what it says. And he that is unjust in least is unjust also in what? Money magnifies what you already are. Whatever I am, money magnifies that and increases it. If I'm a faithful servant, then it will begin to magnify my faithfulness. If I'm a fool, it will begin to magnify my foolishness. That's why you can give a drug addict 10 bucks, you're going to spend it on drugs. Give him 10,000. Guess where he's running? To the drugstore. An illegal pharmacist. Amen. Give a gambler 10 bucks. Guess what he's going to do? Gamble. Give him a million, give him a million dollars. He'll find a way to spend 10000 a week in lottery until he'll blow the whole million. See, see, money magnifies what you already are. Some of our folks say, you know, we should have never given you that money. It just corrupted you. No, the seed was already in them, baby. Though we know it is the will of God to prosper believers, some of you, we pray that God don't prosper you immediately. We could not stand you magnified. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. could we really handle you, really handle you? If, you if you ever became large? Amen. Okay, 
let's move on here. So principle 23 here out of the planner, and we're still on page 20, it says, money exposes your what? Yes. So right next to that, just put there, money magnifies what you already are. If you don't already have that down, money magnifies. See, it's important for you to understand these principles because now you've got to discern what's keeping you from coming into wealth. What is actually keeping you from coming into wealth? Why is it that the enemy works overtime to keep you ignorant? Amen. Why do you keep making dumb mistakes and walking with wrong, wrong people? Do you not know that you can have one distraction in your life that will eliminate and cancel your Boaz? And your Boaz is a man of strength, someone that is sent to you to be your supply. Don't let just anyone walk with you. Someone that is walking with you may be sent of the enemy to eclipse your blessing. Amen. I've gone certain places and I was getting ready to take certain individuals. The Holy Spirit said, no, don't take them. I'll say, I'll say why, Lord? He said, they'll change the whole focus of the mood. Amen. Um, some individuals, he says, don't take them because they just simply talk too much. They don't know how to keep their mouth closed. Amen. Amen. Never take a talking person whenever you're trying to negotiate a deal. Amen. You'll be there saying, you know, well, I think 30000 for that particular car is a little bit too much. Elegant. No, that's a good price. Remember the last place we went to was 33 <laughs> See, never... <laughs> Amen. See, you got to discern. There's sometimes people you're walking with that is canceling your miracle. Amen. I can prove to you from the scripture, you could have a wrong person in your life that can shipwreck your ship. Yes. Ask those that was on the boat and Jonah got on board. You want to see your ship become rocky? If your ship or the ship of your life has become rocky, it could be a signal that you got a backslidden prophet on board. And see, many of us, we thought it was our job to save the backslidden prophet. But your job is to throw him overboard so that the fish that is assigned to him will handle him. Or her. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you have not been assigned to backslidden prophets. You can lay your head in the wrong lap and lose your strength. Lean on me. You can lean on the wrong individual and your strength is removed. Ask Samson. Who you sleep with will determine where you are going. Ask Solomon. He slept with strange women. And it brought him devastation. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Be, careful be careful who you sleep with. The Bible says a whorish woman will bring you to a piece of bread. You go for that piece, you won't be worth the price of a slice. Amen. Oh, it's getting quiet in here today. It's all right, but I don't need the amens to drown me out to keep on preaching. 